Hello and welcome to uh, Animation Flash, specifically Lesson 4, and this is, uh, well, sorry, Chapter 5, Lesson 4, and this is created an animated uh, navigation bar. And the overall idea behind this is, is if you've ever been on the internet for whatever reason, and you actually click on menus and then have the down drop arrow where that's concerned, uh, we are actually creating that in Flash. And once again, all of these things have kind of been pre-made for us so we can create and uh, work with the navigation bar. Now what I've done is I've, I've went ahead and I've loaded up my solution so you can see in the long run what we're actually shooting for so it's not just a bunch of random things. So if I look at this, the idea is I'm creating a navigation bar where I click on it. Notice as I take my mouse over here for events, it then appears. And then if I take my mouse off, it then disappears. Interesting thing about this menu is if I take it down this way, it doesn't work. Now, why you why it specifically doesn't work only if you take it below, I have no idea. But if you take it this way, it works, it goes off, on. If you take it this way, it just kind of stays on until you mouse over again. It's, it's kind of weird. But you kind of have to play with it. But what we're doing is we're putting together all the pieces to make that happen. So, the very first thing is we're going to, and this is our FL5 underscore 4, that's what I've opened. It says, click the home background layer. So, here's my home background layer and uh, insert a new layer to name it Road Rally. So I want to insert, I want to do timeline, and I want to do, I want to do layer, and I want to name that Road Rally. So here we go, Road Rally, right? So it's called Road Rally. And then on Road Rally, I want to click frame two. There's my frame two, and I want to insert a keyframe. I'm going to insert timeline, and I want to do a keyframe. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm laying the groundwork in order to make all these buttons appear. It says display the library panel. So I want to make sure to display the library panel. Open buttons folders and drag the B Road Rally button to the position just below the events button. Now this is similar to figure 17 on page 5-20. Now once again, as you're taking a look at all these bad boys, you have to understand that someone has gone, oh, see what I see. Someone has gone through, oh, really? Someone has gone through and they've created all these buttons to do these different things beforehand. So I'm going to take the B Road Rally button. Here's my B Road Rally button. I'm going to grab this and I'm going to move it over here under the event. Okay, so it looks similar to uh, figure 17. It said, insert a new layer above the home background layer and name it Austin. So here's my home background layer. I click on that and then I want to insert uh, timeline layer, and I want to call this auction. A U C T R O N. For those of you apparently that needed auction spelled out. Um, then I want to click on frame two where that's concerned, and I want to go ahead and insert timeline keyframe. So once again, I'm setting up to do that. Then I want to drag the B auction button. So here's my B auction button, and I want to uh, move that below the road route. So I've got kind of my drop-down menu uh, where that's concerned. Oh, I like it better. Okay, good. Okay, so I have that there. And then it says, click the zoom tool, get closer to it so I can see, and I can use my control plus button and kind of move that around um, where I can play with that. And, and do it. So now I can actually see more of what's going on. There's my road rally and auction. I don't want to do I use my uh, arrow keys to do that. So it says click the road rally layer and insert a new layer above it called map. So I'm going to click my road rally and I want to do insert and I'm going to do timeline layer and this layer is going to be called map. So I come along and I'm on flash 5-21 and I want to call this map. So there's my map layer. Then I want to make sure to click my rectangle tool, my rectangle tool on the tools menu, and make sure it's not your simple rectangle tool. Make sure it's a regular rectangle tool. I want to make sure the stroke is none and the fill color is black. Stroke is none, fill color is black, so there you have it. And then I want to draw a rectangle around the two menus as shown in figure 20. Right, so it says a lot of large bottom rectangle at the bottom of the navigation bar. Right? So I'm going to come in basically right here. And I want to actually click on the rectangle tool, that would be the point. 
and I want to come along and I want to draw my rectangle around those two menus. And then once I draw those uh, around the two menus, I want to then insert a motion scene. So with that item selected, so I want to select my... I want to select my... Use my selection tool. I'm going to select that. And I'm going to click and then click, I want to click motion scene. So I want to insert motion scene. Yes, it's going to convert it to a symbol. And then what I want to do is I want to click frame five. So here's my frame five. And I want to move the, the selection tool and the rectangle up to where it's similar to figure 20. So select frame full channel, then drag the rectangle above the button to show in figure 20. Quick frame five on the left, then into two frame. That's the time to find me. Pushing that option button. So hold on. I just want to make sure I'm doing this in the right order because I think I've run into. Yep. Okay, I ran into some technical difficulties. That makes sense. Okay. So I'm still here. I want this to actually be right here. And then what I do as I create the motion tween, I'm actually going to. right there. So I want this to be right here. And then when I click slide 5, I want this to move down here. Now that was kind of confusing what I just did due to some uh, possible technical uh, difficulties. So I'll go ahead and do that again. On slide, excuse me, P2, my rectangle is similar to figure 20. So my rectangle should be right here. Then what happens is on keyframe five, my rectangle is here. Okay. So I've done that. And then I want to click on the math timeline. So here's my math timeline. And then I want to click layer properties math option. So I want uh if Math and timeline, click modify, point to timeline, so modify on timeline. And I want to choose my layer property. And then I want to see the layer, I'm going to use my mask option button, so I want to turn that to a mask in order to what we did before. And I want to push, okay, so mask option, okay. So now that is a mask option. And I want to click road rally on the timeline. So here's my road rally. And I want to modify that. And what I'm doing now is since I've created a mask with that uh, square involved, I want to do modify timeline layer properties. And I'm choosing mask. So what happens is, is that's going to now, you'll notice the icon here is associated with this mask. And I'm going to do that for the auction as well. So I'm going to come along. I'm going to do modify timeline. And I'm going to layer properties, and I'm going to change that to mask. So that's associated now with the one above it. So if you drag the playhead along the timeline, notice you have a mask, hides, and reveals the button. So if I drag this line, mask, hide, reveal, hide, reveal. It's like square calisthenics. It's so awesome. All right, so. Okay. So. Drag the playlist. Change the view to fit the window. Click frame 2 on the road rally layer, then click road rally button to select it. So, I'm going to do my road rally level, or layer. I'm going to click frame 2, which is right there. And I want to click the road rally button, which is right there. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to change the road rally button. And you have to make sure, if you're going to make changes, you need to select on the item that's actually going to be changed. Then I want to make sure to open the actions panel. So here's my actions panel. And then um, I want to make sure that this button is selected. And that gives me some scripting help. And verify the script of uh, B Road Rally. There's B Road Rally there. And I want to click the add new item. This is an add new script. I want to do global functions. I want to choose timeline control. And I want to choose go to. So there's my go to function. Now you'll notice it automatically chooses since we're dealing with a button. It's the on release, meaning I've clicked on it. It wants to, to go to and play one. And I, in this case, I'm going to go to and play scene two. Hmm. Oh, sorry, my bad. 
I'm going to choose scene two. Right, so there's my scene two. And I'm going to choose go to and play scene one. So we're going to do, so it says go to and play scene two and one. So let me go backwards. I missed the part where it said on the scene section, see scene two, and then frame, you want to make sure it's frame one. So when you put it all together, it says on release, meaning when you release it, go to and play scene two number one. Verify the type is set to frame number and the frame is set to one, and we want to collapse the action. Collapse the action. I've already done that. Now, what we're going to do is insert a new layer on top of the timeline and name it label. So I want to make sure that I'm on top of the timeline here, and I want to insert, and I want to do timeline, and I want to do a new layer. This new layer, we're going to call it label. Label. Alright, so it's going to call labels and then enter the keyframe in frame two. So I've inserted a keyframe in frame two. And I'm going to display the properties panel. There's my properties panel. And then, uh, let's see, display the properties panel, click inside the name text box in the label area, and then events menu as shown. So we're, here's our, and I want to see what the, uh, the name for the label will be events menu, events menu, right? there we go, and so I'm going to the keyframe, name says events menu, click the events button on the stage to select it, and then we want to, okay, so right. expand the actions panel, then verify that so we're going to expand our actions panel, there's lots of sections of this, and we're going to click the events button on the stage to select it, so what we want to do is we want to make sure the events button is selected. There we go. And then we want to expand the action. Then we want to expand the action. So now we've got our B events down there. I want to click and add new, which is right here. And then I want to choose global function. And then I want to choose movie clip control. And I want to choose then I want to click the release checkbox, check box, and I want to change it to rollover. So what's happening now is I'm changing the event button to operate where if I roll over it, it's going to do something. Now I'm going to choose the global function, timeline control, and go to. So now that basically what's going to happen is just click the type list arrow. And there's my type list arrow, and I want to go to frame label, and frame list arrow, then click event menu. So there's my event menu. So basically, on rollover, go to and play the event menu. To change to resemble figure 25, you can see both on 5 that's 23, that's figure 25. And so now, if I come along here, like that. And I do control, test movie, in flash professional. And I come along events. There's my events menu. Events. Events. So in that particular case, now I've done it where each one of them, notice it now, it'll only turn it off when I do this. There we go. Right. Now that concludes the first part of working with the events menu all the way through uh, slide 5-23. The next part we're going to talk specifically about dealing with the adding the invisible button to get the rollover to turn off. So, thank you very much for your time. If you have any particular questions, uh, let me know. Thank you.